to the day that I die. Spring has thawed out the long bitter weather. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Beaver Kill River. I might even catch and release one too. Well, some folks like horses, cats, or dogs. With a rod and a fly Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine If I couldn't do it I think I would cry Well, life is good When I'm wading a river It gets even better When I cast a fly If I catch a trout It don't really matter It's fun just to be here and give it How you doing? Welcome to Riffles and Waves. On today's show, I'm going to tie a hare's ear nymph. And this is a very good uh, underwater fly for the early season and all through the summer and into the fall. This is probably one of the most popular flies of all by fishermen and fish, them, fish as well. So you're going to want to make sure you know how to tie this. Uh, it calls for a rib around the abdomen. Uh, so we're going to palmer that, so we're going to learn that skill. We're also going to make a wing case out of a turkey quill which has been lacquered. Put some lacquer on that so it's nice and stiff. And we're going to put some lead wire around the, the hook to add some weight. We're going to use our dubbing wax to put dubbing on the thread. And we're also going to tie our thread on. You're going to learn how to do that today. And um, we're also going to uh, show you the hare's ear mask. Now, the hare's ear mask is uh, is the you know it's the fur from the face of a hare's ear. Uh, hare hare's mask is what it is. And uh, what's up, Doc? Uh, anyway, we're going to use some of these long fibers here for the tail, um, the darker ones, and we're going to uh, use some of the softer, fluffier stuff for the dubbing. And uh, to make your dubbing out of a hare's ear mask before you start tying is you find some fluffy stuff that you want to use the color that you want to use you simply cut it off the the skin you put it in a little bowl here and we're going to blend this we're going to mix this up and you want to use the guard hairs with this you don't want to get rid of the long long dark hairs uh, that's the outer fur um, and you don't and you want to use the softer fluffy stuff next to the skin that's the, where all the warmth comes from on the on the rabbit, but uh, we got a nice wad of dubbing fur for this particular fly. What I'm going to do also is I'm going to make a tail using uh, some of the longer guard hairs and pulling the the fuzz out of uh, that clump. So 
Um, if you've been watching the show, uh, last week we went over materials and tools. So today I'm not going to talk a lot about tools. We're just going to use our scissors today, and we're going to use our bobbin with thread, and we're going to use our vise, and the rest is going to be uh, uh, materials. Now, uh, if you look here, I have uh, hairs here that I already tied in my vise, and I'm going to zoom in on that. So you'll see here that we have a hairs here already tied. And you're going to want to note some features on this. It has a tail back here, and it has a rib, and it has a thorax, and it has a wing case. Okay? So those are the things we're going to be working on today. Okay? So get your uh, fly vise out, fly tying vise out, and get your some hooks. What I'm using today is a size 12 hook. So it's a heavy nymph hook. So we're going to take this one out of here, put this over here somewhere where I won't lose it and I'm gonna take my size 12 hook now when you put a hook in a vise you don't want to clamp it way in there like that and you want it sticking up and out and you don't want to clamp the barb of the hook you want to keep that barb free you don't you don't want that barb to get uh, uh, ruined uh, and, and if you use barbless hooks it's not a problem but still you want your hook in your vise so that it's pretty much level um, and it will give you a nice nice thing to tie in. Now when you're putting your thread on again you want to make sure you have the proper tension on your thread you know you don't want it to be so tight that it breaks when you pull on it but yet you also want it don't want it to be too loose. Now the best way to put thread on is to just go pull towards you and then wrap over that thread and that's it and then if you hold this thread here at a 45 degree angle you just you can wrap real fast and it gives you a really tight wrap of thread on the shank of the hook and that's another thing I should talk about the parts of the hook first and I will as soon as I get thread on there now I'm down to the bend of the hook um, this is a turned down eye there are also hooks with a turned up eye uh, but this one we're using a turn down eye. There's the eye of the hook. The shank is the top of the hook here, uh, the straight part. And then the bend, when I say back to the bend, tie back to the bend means you're going to wrap your thread back to the bend, which is where the bend starts. Then you have your barb and your point. So in the gap is, the gap of the hook is the distance between the shank and the point. Okay? So there's a couple of different distances there that will come into play as we tie some other flies, okay? For right now, you only need to know the back. Now, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to find some guard hairs, some of these longer guard hairs from my uh, hairs mask, and just grab them and then cut. And I don't want to waste this uh, material, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to drop, I'm just going to pull the guard hairs out, and did I get any? Yep, I got some. And, well, not enough. I'm going to put that back down in there. Uh, what I want to do is get some of these longer ones. Here we go. Here's some longer ones. And this is just to make the tail, okay? So, um... I want to make sure I got some tips there and I'm going to pull out all the fluff. Drop it in my little dish. And I just want some some fibers there for my tail, okay? And it's looking pretty good. So, I'm going to tie my tail on by pinching this material, okay? I'm going to pinch it and then I'm going to pull the thread up through. I'm going to hold it where I want it on the hook and then pull up pull up, pull up. Once the material is fairly tight to the hook, you can wrap it. We're going to wrap back to the bend, and there's our tail. Okay, Simple little tail. Now, um, I like to put the tinsel, I, I like to put the tail on first, and then any tinsel um, 
I like to put on now before I put my uh, um, lead on. So I'm going to wrap this around there and just tie it down. No big deal. And I'm going to put this back to there. I'm going to clip this oval tinsel. This was on a spool and you can see it's kind of curly. So I'm going to put it in my material clip, the spring back here. Um, you can see the spring? There we go. <clears throat> now I need to put some of the lead wire on there. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One of the ways I like to do it is to just hold it on there and wrap forward trying to make it really tight. We don't need a lot on here, just enough to get it to sink. And a lot of times with hairs here, you will use a split shot. And you can even tie this with a bead head if you want. You put a bead head on there and you can tie this um, same fly with the bead head. Now I'm going to wrap around that and try to wrap that lead down tight. Okay. Put a lot of thread on there and kind of taper this at the back here so that my uh, dubbing when I put that on it will go right up over it nice and smooth and you won't see the lead at all. So now we're going to come back to uh, our tail. going to leave our uh, material in there. Now I'm going to use my dubbing wax I'm going to put some dubbing wax on the, on my thread. See that? Nice and sticky. And then I'm going to take uh, some of our dubbing here. Mix it up a little better. I'm going to take, take just a little bit of dubbing, not a lot. And you just stick it to the thread. See how that sticks right on there? And then when we get some on there, we're going to spin it. Sometimes it helps get your fingers a little damp. It helps tighten it. We're going to spin that right up. Now, we're going to wrap this around the hook. This is called dubbing. It's not a big deal. And there we go. Now I'm going to take my tinsel and just pull it tight and wrap it. But I'm going to palmer it. And palmering means you leave a space so that there's a gap between and the material shows through underneath, the dubbing shows through. Now I'm just going to tie this off with a couple of quick wraps and come back to about the shoulder, right about there, because that's where we're going to put our wing case. Okay. So here's our turkey quill that had lacquer put on it, right here. I'm going to Cut a piece of this out and just pull it out if I can. And this is going to make our wing case. We don't want it that wide, so I'm going to strip some out of there and make it a little more narrow. And then I'm going to clip it off at the tip and I'm going to hold it down with my thumb on the top of the hook. And then I'm going to carefully wrap over it. And tie it down. That's pretty pretty simple. Okay? And that's just gonna be sticking back like that. Now we're gonna take and we have to make our thorax. So I'm gonna take a little dubbing wax, just stick a little on the thread, and I'm gonna take uh, maybe a little darker color here of our mix. And the thorax can be pretty big and bulky, so don't worry about using too much. Uh, of your material on that. As long as you can tie your head on, you'll be fine. So I'm just going to wrap this big bulky material around there and tie off up to the eye with the hook. Now I'm going to pull my wing case over and hold it down. Okay, like so. Now I'm going to carefully wrap around it. Pinching it. Then we're going to clip this off. And you can see what an ugly, beautiful fly this is. Lots of hair, 
lots of movement in the water. That's what makes it a good fly. And I was looking for my half hitch tool, which is right here. So now we're going to just do a quick little half hitch or two and keep the thread tight. We're going to put that over the eye and then slide the line up. There you go. Simple little fly to tie and it's very effective and uh, I hope you'll tie a bunch of these up. Now you can tie these with a beard and by a beard I mean uh, you take a little piece of pheasant tail. I don't have any right here do I? But you take a little piece of pheasant tail and tie a, tie a little piece on the bottom side. So now we can clip our thread here because we're tied off. And with this fly here it doesn't bother me to use a little zappa gap. So we got a little zappa gap and we just that helps hold that wing case nice and tight on top and uh, makes it kind of shiny and that's your hair's ear nip. Nice little fly. So there you have it folks. That was the hair's ear nymph. It couldn't really get, well it can get easier than that. And I will show you uh, when Mike Bukowski comes on the show in a couple weeks, um, he'll show you a really easy um, uh, pattern to tie that is a two-step fly and it's modeled after Fran Better's usual and Mike Bukowski calls it the unusual. And it's uh, basically a two-step fly. But this, this today we tied the hairs here nymph. This is a good all-around nymph and again you can tie it with a bead head. If you put a bead head on there uh, you can uh, tie it with a bead head that's very effective. Uh, you can also tie it with a beard and uh, on the bottom side here. So uh, tie a bunch of these up. It may behoove you also to tie some lighter colors and uh, you know on a hair's ear mask, you got a variety of colors, so use use all the different colors you can, um, and tie as many as you can with one of these hair's masks. These are about three three bucks over at Gander Mountain, so uh, go check it out. Um, other another uh, you can use a hair's foot to tie this fly as well. Uh, this is a red one, but you could tie this uh, using a natural color hair's foot. Uh, which also you can be found uh, in various stores um, and you can tie the hair's ear. You don't need just the hair's ear mask. What you need is the coloring in the, in the fibers and the bushier you can make this fly the better it is. Oh, almost glued my fingers together. Um, so the bushier this fly is the better and again uh, when, it's, when it's got a lot of loose fibers and it's in the water it, the fibers move around and look real. Um, if you look at a, a nymph, uh, uh, a real live nymph, they have uh, legs and they have gills on the on their abdomen that are fluttering while they're breathing. So you're going to want to uh, keep keep in mind that perfect flies aren't the best. Uh, I like to make all my flies a little ugly and buggy. You know, buggy, buggy is the key to my flies. And also, a fly like this will imitate, uh, can imitate an emerging caddis too if you lift it. Uh, you know, you cast it out and across and let, let that go down. And then when it gets to the bottom, you gently lift it or jitter it uh, as it's going up to the surface. And they'll think it's a caddis emerging. So it's not just a mayfly nymph bouncing along the bottom, but it can also be a caddis fly. And uh, the sparkle of this uh, oval, the tinsel, um, probably adds to the caddis effect of because caddis will hold uh, um, uh, nitrogen under their their skin while they're uh, uh, you know a nymph, and they'll let go, so they'll shoot up to the surface from the air bubbles, and that's what this oval tinsel will help imitate is those air bubbles that are under their skin that help shoot them up to the surface. So 
um, as usual, there's a, a lot to learn about fly fishing. And uh, um, so sit down at your bench and tie some of these hares ear nymphs and get ready for spring because it'll be here before you know it. So next week I'm going to be covering uh, um, some dry flies and uh, I'm probably going to do a um, just a light Cahill, something really simple. Um, and we'll be tying split wings and we'll be wrapping hackle. So we're going to take this, this fly one step further. We're going to put a tail in of uh, the same color hackle um, that we're going to wrap around the, the, the thorax. Uh, and we're going to use a, a quill or a, a dubbing for the body. And we're going to use a hackle and we're going to use uh, some lemon wood duck uh, fibers and tie a split V wing on, on the on next week. So uh, get your uh, get your tape uh, VCR ready to tape next week's show. And uh, you can also go to my website, and uh, I have uh, some videos on on of some of the same flies I'm tying here today. I think I have the hare's ear nymph on there. Uh, I have the light Cahill. I have Kurt's killer stonefly. I think I have the black woolly bugger on my website. It um, homepage.mac.com slash avkurt. That'll get you to my homepage. I got some photos on there, uh, uh, fishing trips and stuff like that. But there's a whole bunch of videos on there. I have one about stress trout down on the beaver kill. I have one I just did the other day of the Nanako Creek, uh, which I'll feature on this show as well. And uh, so with all that, to check out on my website uh, there's several fly tying videos and some other fishing videos so go do that but for right now um, I'm gonna say uh, see you next week and uh, let's get tying let's get tying some flies man this is awesome we got so much to do so many flies to tie I don't know where to start I'm going to start my presentation by moving to the other end of the room uh, where I can use a little indoor fly casting rod. So just give me a minute to do that. This is a little three foot rod, and the yarn, of course, does not have any weight as does a fly line, but it has air resistance. And so it requires the same kind of disciplines and actions that a real fly rod would require. One foot of yarn is the equivalent of four or five feet of regular line. So if you're casting six feet of yarn, it means you, you do the same motions for 24 to 30 feet. Fly casting is the back and forth motion of the forearm and hand within the up and down motion of the whole rod. We use our body to make those strokes longer. We change from vertical casting to any plane that we happen to cast in to put the fly under a bush or to put a backhand under a bush. So we can cast in all of the both planes from horizontal on the right, horizontal on the left. And we use all three parts of our arm. We use our wrist from a bent down position to a straight position. We use our forearm to give length to the stroke. The number of inches that your hand is traveling is related to the length of the line. And we use our upper arm to give us the freedom to make long strokes or long casts or to change our direction. When I started to cast in 1937, we put a book under your arm or perhaps a dollar bill if you were a kid, because that was much more valuable. And we all were taught to cast just like this. And they would say, it's all on the wrist, you know. Well, I was a 10-year-old kid I was in a casting club, and I could cast up to the 35-foot target, but I had to be able to cast to 50 feet. And once I got, once I got past that 35 feet, then it started looking like this, kind of sloppy, no line speed. And so after listening to the grown-ups for a few months, I stopped listening, threw away the dollar bill, lifted my arm, used my body, and was able to get to that 50-foot target. And I was really uh, breaking with tradition. And thank goodness we, we are all breaking with tradition now and using uh, our whole arm and our body. Because casting with just your wrist is like running with your knees tied together. 
<laughs> you can do it, but it's not much fun. And so you need to use that upper arm to have great freedom. The strokes, the thing that makes this all work is moving your hand, and basically for me it's the thumb in a straight line on a diagonal backward and a diagonal forward to a target area. I am creating open-ended, unrolling loops in two directions. And so the real challenge to fly fishing is to be able to throw backward because there is no other sport, no other activity in our whole lives in which we throw backward. And so that's the reason why you most likely need instruction for your fly casting as opposed to just figuring it out. It is not like that which you can hear it would start to snap the fly off. It unroll, unroll, perfectly um, equal power. In the beautiful tsunami, I wish for you. Thank you.